The ancient Babylonians were astute observers of the night sky. They meticulously studied and recorded their observations in tablets of clay. Sadly, very few of these diaries, tablets, and almanacs remain, but those that do give us a snapshot of a sky from 2,500 years ago. Observations of sun, moon, eclipses, solstices, the timings of sunsets and sunrises to moonsets and moonrises, the positions of planets against the constellations, gives us an unmistakable fingerprint that helps us synchronize the year of the reigning monarch to an absolute date in history. It is true that these ancient astronomers believed that they were recording divine messages, and at times endeavored to tie these heavenly signs to events occurring on the earth. Should these motivations deter us? Actually, just the opposite. A religious motivation meant that these astronomers would be all the more meticulous in recording what they viewed as a sacred message. Does the fact that many of these tablets, such as VAT4956, are a copy and not the original mean that the astronomical diary is invalid? Some have tried to argue this way, and yet, at the same time, they rely on tablets such as BM33066 to calculate the year 539 BC for the fall of Babylon, which itself is a copy and riddled with errors. We do not have the original manuscripts for such things as the Bible. The earliest manuscripts that scholars can find are copies of copies. We rely on the work of ancient copyists, many of whom were diligent in their sacred work. In a similar way, ancient scribes copied astronomical diaries with a similar diligence because they considered their task a sacred one as well. They wanted to understand the meaning of it all. They wanted to learn to predict heavenly and earthly phenomena. Therefore, this motivation would make them strive for accurate transmission from source to copy. It would be impossible to just fake these astronomical observations and have them turn out consistently with other observations on the same tablet or even with other astronomical tablets. And the more these diaries are examined, the more a consistent timeline can be produced, one that completely harmonizes with other evidences, such as the economical business transactions of that time period. One of the foremost astronomical diaries for the Neo-Babylonian period is FAT4956. It contains dozens of observations dated to Nebuchadnezzar's 37th year. We know that Jerusalem was destroyed in Nebuchadnezzar's 18th regnal year. Therefore, by determining his 37th year, we can determine his 18th. For instance, if FAT4956 points to 568 BC as the 37th year, then the 18th year would be 587 BC. If it matches 588 BC, then the 18th year would be 607. One of the greatest strengths of this tablet is the planetary observations. Keep in mind that each of the five visible planets revolve about the Sun at different times. Saturn every 29 and a half years. Jupiter roughly every 12 years. Mars every 687 days. Venus every 224 days. And Mercury every 87 days. The combination of planetary observations on VAT4956 cannot occur again for many thousands of years. To what year do these combination of observations point? They can point only to 568 as Nebuchadnezzar's 37th year and to no other date in recorded history. Even supporters of 607 have been forced to acknowledge that modern chronologers point out that such a combination of astronomical positions would not be duplicated again in thousands of years. And, this might seem like incontrovertible evidence. Despite this omission, decades later, 607 supporters tried to argue that the planetary observations could be dismissed wholesale by saying that on VAT4956 that some of the names of the planets and their positions are unclear, and because of this the planetary observations are open to speculation and to several different interpretations. What citation is used to support this? It is the book Mesopotamian Planetary Astronomy, Astrology by David Brown, pages 53 through 57. 
However, when you read those pages in David Brown's book, what does it say? In talking about planetary names on astronomical diaries in general, he mentions what he calls A names for planets, which are clear and unmistakably belong to only one planet. And he highlights what he calls B names, C names, and D names, which are ambiguous and can refer to several planets, depending on the circumstances. However, David Brown shows that VAT4956 only uses A-list names, planetary names which are clear and distinct. The citation of David Brown does not support the idea that the names are unclear. That, at best, is a mistake, and at worst, disingenuous. The fact is, if one analyzes VAT4956, the planetary observations are very clear and consistent, and match the year 568 BC and no other. It could be hard to build a consistent picture for 568 BC if these observations were that ambiguous. A consistent picture emerges from this diary that matches no other year. This is an inconvenient truth for those who believe that the 37th year is 588 BC because the planetary positions for 588 BC do not match the positions found in VAT 4956 in the least. But even without these planetary observations, VAT4956 contains a group of observations called the Lunar Threes. The time from sunrise to moonset, sunset to moonset, moonrise to sunrise. The best match for these Lunar Three observations is the year 568 BC. When one tries to compare these Lunar Threes to 588 BC, either in the standard calendar for that year, or a proposed counterfeit calendar starting a month later, some Lunar Threes could not be measured for several dates in 588 BC at all, and for the dates that could be measured, Overall, 568 BC matches twice as close as the conventional 588 calendar, and four times as close as the counterfeit calendar proposed. The Babylonian measurement of a lunar 3 might not have been as precise as tools we have in modern times, but they were good enough. If that were not so, one could not use the lunar 3s to identify 568 BC at all. The very fact that we can identify this year on the basis of the lunar 3s alone tells us that the timekeeping methods were sufficient. VAT4956 makes 568 BC an absolute date for Nebuchadnezzar's 37th year. This would make, again, his 18th year, 587 BC. VAT4956 alone shows that we cannot move Nebuchadnezzar's reign back 20 years. For a more detailed look at this astronomical diary, see Appendix 7a, b, and c, or see Appendix 6 in order to learn how to do the archaeoastronomy for yourself.